Crazy Blessed Worship. I'm Coley D. And I am the original Rick W. Ross. And we have somebody with us today that is already in tomorrow. And now that I've confused you, let me explain. <laughs> so I happen to have a kid that thinks it's slick to say tomorrow never comes. But for Rick and myself, our friend is already in tomorrow. So who we have with us is in Guam. We've got one of our admin team's brothers. I'm not going to say who until the end if you missed our first time getting to talk to him. But we've got Asriel Phoenix back with us today. Last time we had him on, it was like, no, we, we're not done yet. <laughs> so Asriel, thanks so much for joining us. How are you today? I'm doing this fine. fine morning Thank over you. there. Friday morning. <laughs> Good morning to me. Good afternoon to you. Shalom, shalom to everybody. <laughs> Our last interview with him, if you have not seen it, you definitely are going to want to check it out. I'll make sure that the link is ready and available for you. If you either go to crazyblessedworship.com or in Facebook, there's the Crazy Blessed Worship public page or the Crazy Blessed Worship private group. We want to make sure you can find it. We got into some really interesting stuff and um, one of the things we did not get into, uh, the sibling of Asriel, who is yet to be named right now, <laughs> if you know, don't tell yet. She had sent me this clip that you made, Asriel, that I was so profoundly moved by, where um, you had this musical background in the story that you had made for your son. And it left me going... I wish I could write this into a book and do all the illustrations for him if he hasn't done it yet. I want to know if he has this as a book. And I was so fascinated by the story and just, I I, I really did want to know more about what it was. And when I was told that I had to hear the full testimony behind it, I was like, well, let's do it. So um, I know that's a huge part of your story. And we would love if you would share a little bit about how that that story that you made uh, came to be in the background with it. Oh, the little warrior. Okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that was it. Now, I knew my son was sick for some time and I've been praying for him. He, he We bounced back, you know, it's like a normal type of thing going on. But when I found out that he went into a coma, and I'm not there to be with him. He he lived in the Philippines. And I lived in on Guam. And of course, you know how resources are. At the same time, I've been uh, blacklisted from the Philippines. <laughs> and so I can't come and go as I want to go. If I had, if I could, I would. But it didn't happen that way. So I'm a storyteller. I write stories. You can find some of my stuff on Wattpad. I'm on Wattpad. Um, but my main thing was I was deeply concerned about my son. And so I wrote this little poem. It was more of a poem to encourage him. And I knew that he was like, uh, he was more into, you know, he was a little prayer warrior. That's all. And that's why I wrote it because I knew that he, um, he'd get the idea. So I wrote this poem. I sent it to my, uh, his mother who lives in Colorado and she gave it to her mother who lives in the Philippines and she let him listen to it. And the thing is um, that whole week was a most trialsome week. And then I went into a slump, not really a slump three months, but I'll get it to that moment. The poem will come up when he heard my voice in that music, in that poem, it, it snapped him back out of a coma in that time frame. After that, on a Thursday night, I was at work. I, I was uh, I was working as security, and Yeshua came to me, the King of Kings. People don't think he's real because they don't have a relationship with him. They don't understand. He warns people about things before it happens because. He loves us that much. Mm -hmm. And when you have a relationship with him, he, 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 he does everything he can to prepare us. And believe me, this was one of those moments that you'll never forget. You just can't forget. But so anyways, 
Yeshua came to me. He sat down next to me. I saw him. I don't know if anybody else saw him, but I saw him. Okay. And he sat there and he says, I am going to take your son home. I says, I said nothing the first time. I was like blank. I, I was like numb. My mind just couldn't function. <laughs> and then he said it again. Then I said, why don't you just take my life instead of his? Let him live a full life. I've already lived a whole life. He says, no, I cannot do that. And like I said, I scratched my head and asked, but you can do anything. <laughs> and he says, you're right, I can, but I'm not going to. And the reason why is because I'm taking your son. Because what is coming quickly, he will not be able to endure it. Then he says to me, I am not taking you because you are a light to my people. A light to your people. You know, that kind of a... Put you me just in a position. Cut out. I was like, okay, how, how? What, what did you just say? He said, okay, I'm, where do I I'm taking you from. He said, you're a light to my people. God, Jesus didn't want to take you because you were a light to the people. So that, that's what, that's what we're going to cut people. out. Okay. He said, I was a light to his people and he's not done with me yet. But my son, he's taken because he's protecting him for what's coming quickly and I'm beginning to see why. <laughs> now, he gave me three. He says, I will give you three signs to know that I am telling you this. The first sign I will send you, your, Jovi's going to send me a picture. The first picture she sends you is the way I saw him when I walked past him. And so that happened. I see. I, I still have that picture on my computer. The second sign is that she's going to call you Friday night, Friday morning. She's going to call you Friday morning, but you are to be patient with her. That's what he told me. You are to be patient with her. So I um, <clears throat> I, I listen and I obey. <laughs> and the third sign is he will die after the Sabbath. It will be his Sabbath, actually, on his time frame. Well, <clears throat> little did I know is that when he, what, what happened, when everything was fulfilled that time. But then the most interesting and the most profound thing I remember about my son, who was 10 years old, on his deathbed, he was in the hospital. And he said, I want to go to the church. That's what I want. So they, get, they put, picked him up and took him to the church. Now, in the church, you get all these elders who decide, oh, let's lay hands on him. You know, you guys, you know, my mind is like, you should have done this when it first began. James 5, right? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> so he's there. And according to his grandmother, his last words, his last word was Yeshua, not Jesus. Yeshua. And he did not know Yeshua like I wanted to teach him. He did not know that. But the thing is about my son is that it was my desire to teach him the truth. To teach the truth. And Yeshua honored me with that. His little mouth, tears flowing from his eyes. He reached out. His last breath was Yeshua and he left. His, his Ruach, his Kaim, was gone. But he went to paradise with Yeshua. And that I do know, because it's in the scriptures. <laughs> um, but the, the, the thing is, is that my son was faithful to what little he knows. In 2 Ezra chapter 7, Yeshua talks to Ezra about people being faithful, what little they have. You may not know the mysteries of the universe or creation itself, but if you're faithful to what you are given, he honors that. You may not know his name, but if you go by the name Jesus, but you know the character that you're supposed to play and you don't follow it, you're breaking protocol. We have to be faithful to what we have. Everything we got, we are judged according to our wisdom, 
our knowledge, our understanding, the way we treat one another, and the way we live our life, and how we honor Yahweh by obeying his commandments and loving our neighbors. This is what we're judged on. But people don't see it that way. I'm a Christian. I can do what I want and whenever I want. And I don't care. I don't have to pray for you. I can do whatever. And, and a lot of people are like that. But my son, he was our little prayer warrior. He would go to church every week. His favorite pastime was to be in the house of Yahweh to pray and to read, to hear the word, to worship and to praise. That was his heart's desire. And he was faithful to it. Even with his grandfather, when he was being bad, he would rebuke his grandfather. Time after time, this little nine-year-old spitfire, boom. <laughs> Camiel, and what Yeshua told me, I will never leave my mind, is that Camiel is a seed for repentance, Teshuvah. He's a seed for Teshuvah. Because if a little boy can forget about the ways of this world and follow the heart of Yahava through Yeshua, our Messiah, to the best he knew how, why are we not doing it? Why are we not obeying his commandments that he's given to us? Are we better at judges than he is? Absolutely not. But yet we think we got it all figured out because we got comfortable lives and everybody's all happy, go lucky here. And it's like, you know, to be a servant of Yeshua is the one to suffer. When was the last time men and women of faith really suffered by giving up something they really desire that hurt so much that it doesn't, you get to a point where, it doesn't matter anymore because it, it's his kingdom come. His will be done. Not our kingdom. And this is one thing I've learned from my son. That we need to be faithful to what we know. Like I tell my, uh, the people that I teach, I tell them, look, just be truthful. You're not going to change the world. We don't. Well, that's not our job. Our job is to be a light. Our job is to shine like the stars and let the, the gospel of truth speak. That is the truth of gospel of Yeshua, what he did for us. But we, we're not to overlap it and do what we want to do. We don't have a license to sin. We're, we're supposed to have a license of holiness to be totally separate from this ways of this world. And believe me, I, in my jobs, I, it's only Yahweh that goes before me on this. Because I, 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 I they, they sign me up for a work for Saturday mornings. I never show up. And they say, why did you come in? I said, don't you know it's written? Honor the Sabbath day and keep it holy. And they look at you like cross-eyed, like you got two heads or something. <laughs> well, my son was basically the same, cut from the same cloth as me. But the most, it, it was very hard to see him pass. But yet I understand why it happened. And, but it so saddens me because people don't understand it. They don't get it. It's like, oh, we're sorry for your son's passing. Well, I'm not. He's in paradise. He's made it. He crossed that line. He's at the tree of life. He's with Yeshua right now. He's, he's with the father. He sees everything. And he's going to come back. And you know what? I told his mother. Her and I got a little spat. And I said, you know what? If you really want to see your son like I seen him after his death, obey the commandments. Start doing what Yahweh tells you to do. Start having a relationship with the Father through Yeshua. Then you'll be able to see these things. If you don't, don't complain why you don't have a problem. You're having a problem. Our job is to walk with the Father, as it is written in Isaiah. We are the we are his people to reflect him we are in his image in likeness he's not in our image in likeness and if we're in his image and likeness why do you think he gets so angry with us the second commandment do not misuse the name we misuse the name every day because we're in his image and we're doing what we want to do not what he tells us to do how is he supposed to win the souls of the gentiles who really want to know the truth and we're just confusing them with all these other things oh he's very angry 
And this is one thing I've learned. We can't, it's not our choice to change his agenda, his plot. He made it from the beginning. He, everything he has given to us was not accident. It was purpose. It was deliberate for our, for our sake. Everything from creation, from the, the first light, who was Yeshua, until the last breath, his Chaim is for us, mankind, humanity. But yet we're so far from him because we don't want to obey his rules. We think we got it all figured out because we got salvation. Woo! But the thing is, is that Paul tells us in Philippians 4, no, 3, is that work your salvation fearfully. Hebrews 10, 26 says, if we continue to sin after knowing sin, there's no forgiveness for sin. It's not a free card to do what you want to do. It's a free card to do and live right, to be from the curse of sin and death. And that second death is what scares me the most. He saved us so we can have a long life if we obey. How many times have you read in the scriptures, if you obey my commandments, this will happen. If you disobey my commandments, this is going to happen. Well, you look around you, all those people who are disobeying his commandments, things are just happening left and right. So the thing is, is that our job as children of Yahava is to speak the truth, walk in the light of truth. And it's all been paid for us. Remember in John 17, Yeshua says, let them be as a, we are as one father. My people put them as, as we are one. He wants us to be one with him according to his instructions, the Torah instructions of life. That's what it's about. It's not about I mean, Mr. Smith's um, uh, in, in kingdom over here. It's not about Mr. Edward over here. It's about his kingdom, his kingdom come, his will be done here on Adama as it is in Shemayim, not our kingdom. And when we put ourselves aside and we follow these instructions, many blessings happen. Great things, comfort, joy, peace, shalom. It's, it, and we understand Yeshua in a whole lot, a bigger light. Yeshua did not come to abolish the Torah, but to fill it up. It teaches how to do it. But people don't want to do it. And this one thing about my son, I tell you. He was faithful, and I know, I know in my heart of hearts, if I was able to teach my son what I know, he would have been a dynamic man. Because I have no he, doubt about that. Thank you. It's, it's just amazing how he loves us. He really does. And mm -hmm. I think sometimes we, we, we abuse that. We, we do abuse that love and think everything is okay. And one thing I realized as I'm getting older, mortality is kicking in. <laughs> it's like we're, we're not Superman. We're not these great heroes that we want to be. But mortality is kicking in. It's like, oh, here it comes. <laughs> but um, that is my testimony. My son was a testament to people to understand that we need to be faithful to what we know. And when we grow, we come out of that. It's like anything else. It's like um, we have a butterfly who's trying to relieve its cocoon. But if you pull the butterfly out of the cocoon because you feel sorry for that butterfly, the butterfly dies then instantly because it has no strength to fly. Adversity is our strengthening. Adam was good for two things, testing and trials. That's what it's for. But we need to go through some of these trials to be able to get to that goal that we need. If we don't have it, it's not even worth living for. That's why we have trials and tribulations. And believe me, life is full of it. But it's how you conduct yourself in that trial, how you overdo this. Now, that's the, this is the second part of the testimony. A lot of people in my position would just hate, would just hate the father. They would. It's like, why did you take my son? Oh, da, 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 da. You know, they just go crazy. I'd be honest with you. It was the most hardest thing just to stay humble. 
and just say, your will be done. Not my will, you will be. Yahweh gives, Yahweh takes away. Blessed be his holy name. That was one of the hardest words I had to say that day when my son dropped, when he, he just was gone. And you know what I did throughout that time? I just prayed. I just, that's why some of my songs, my newer songs, like uh, Hear My Cries, that was right after my son died. It was really bothering me. Um, Shield of My Faith, that was another one that I did. Um, it, it just really, you can hear it in my voice what I'm going through. But I focused on the word and I pressed in knowing that he's got my back. I have no excuse because Yeshua did come and visit me and warn me about this. So why am I being upset about this? And what I've discovered is not just because he died. A part of my flesh is cut off. That's the hardest thing to understand. You know how a mother, when the child was born... You are automatically connected to that life form, that life, that blessing, that, that kaim, we call it in Hebrew, connected. But if that kaim was taken from you, you would be devastated as well because that was part of your flesh. And as a father, a part of your flesh, when you're connected to your children in that sense, as a father should be connected to his children, that part was cut off. I felt it. I felt it like cut right off of me and it was the very i couldn't even stand i i felt, i collapsed to my knees when it happened one it of the hardest things one of the hardest things to, to deal with is if your if your children die before your, you is it's, it's very hard to deal with my mom um she was a very avid church goer but uh one of her sons my one of my, my brother dennis um died of you know skin skin cancer she stopped going to church. She blamed God for it. She never went back. And it really distorted her faith. I mean, because she prayed for him that, you know, he'd be healed, but 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 he wasn't. She had a hard time dealing with it. And I know a lot of people out there have a hard time dealing with stuff like that. And it and it's up, up to us whether we're gonna stay faithful or not. You know, how how what it's the Bible says he that overcomes. You know, she'll inherit this and you know inherit internal life and inherit the inherit some of the things in the kingdom. But to be an overcomer, some things like that we're tested by are like this that we have to overcome, even our feelings or our heartache. Sometimes heartache is something is the hardest thing to overcome. I'm just uh, I think that's I think you know God is speaking to through you about that. How do you overcome heartache in this life? Sometimes that's the hardest thing to deal with to be an overcomer of the heartaches that you face can be the hardest things that we have to deal with and to, to overcome and, and still be faithful. Have, how do we overcome heartache? Here's the secret, the scriptures. If your heart is in the scriptures mm -hmm. and you study all the time, we got men and women throughout history in the scriptures that gone through the same thing as us and they overcame it because they trusted. And the key is trusting the father even though we don't understand completely, but he will reveal it. To overcome this heartache, I'll be honest with you, if I didn't know the scriptures, I'd be like everybody else. And that's the truth. But because my passion is the scriptures, I study, and I teach, and I, I live by the word as much as I can to the best I can do. I'm not perfect. Okay, I do make mistakes. But my faith, it's grown because I understand the word. And that's that the thing. Remember the, scriptures, the scriptures also is written. It says that my people perish because they lack knowledge. Yeah. And, it, and when you lack knowledge, we see everybody fall away because they don't understand. But when you understand, it gives you the edge to keep fighting, knowing that he's got it all figured out. And there's a resurrection going to take place soon. And I told my, uh, I told uh, Cammy's mom, I says, I guarantee you, when he rises from the dead, you'll be the first one he'll see. I promise you that. I just know it. I don't know why. I just know it. And you're going to freak out because you're just like, whoa, whoa, you're dead. You're alive. Because you have no faith right now. Because you don't understand the scriptures. And it, our responsibility is to know the word. See, the father 
doesn't leave us blind. The world makes us blind. And the world don't want you to know certain things so they can press their agenda of sorcery, guru stuff, you know. But the truth is, the scriptures are full. When you understand the scriptures and the clarity of it, nothing bothers you no more. But you do go through feelings. You go through pain. You go through suffering. But understand that this is for your strengthening so that you can stand in the end of the, and when these trials and tribulations come upon you. And we're going to be facing such tribulations and many people are going to die because they don't want to live. They don't want to repent. They don't want to turn back to the Father. They don't want to do it His way. It's about their sinful ways that they're comfortable with. They don't want to change. They don't want to struggle. And everything we have is only temporal. Everything, the house that we have, the car we have, the instruments that we have, it's all temporal. What is important is your soul. Your soul should be the most important a comedy that you would invest into your life. And that part of that, feeding that soul is to know the scriptures. They're given to us for a reason, not just to make it hard like a school teacher would, but to teach us what the enemy is out. Remember, Hiel, the devil, hates us, and he'll use it against us to destroy us. But if you know, the devil can't do nothing unless you let him. It's Amen. all up to us what we do with our lives. We choose his ways. Or we choose our ways. We choose our ways. We fall into many temptations of the flesh. And people love it. Oh, it's fun time. It's just funny that people rather, they they rather just serve death than life. Oh, I'm going to choose death because it's more exciting and more thrilling than living a righteous and healthy and blessed life. But they don't understand that being righteous means you're going to suffer one way or another. Everybody in Shemayim or in paradise suffered. Even Yeshua, who created us through the, the, the will of the Father, had to suffer. Why are we any different? We're not. We are to suffer. And sometimes we do it ourselves just to make a point to show his glory. And sometimes we are put in circumstances. We are to conduct ourselves in such a manner that will glorify him, not ourselves. After my son died, it was hard. I took three weeks off. I took three months off of work. I didn't care what anybody said because it was hard for me. But yet, through that time, I spent a lot of time reading the scriptures. Read after read, read after write and write. And, you know, my songs, my stories... My, the books that I'm writing is all based on knowing the Father, basically. That's what it comes down to. Knowing Yeshua, what he did for us. He took away the curse of sin and death. And I'm talking about not the first death yet, the second death. We don't need to die a second death. We don't. And some of us are going to be here when he returns. So the point is, is that I believe as believers, we should really want to serve him with all our hearts, mind, soul, and strength, as it says in the, in the Shema. The Shema is the Deuteronomy 6 prayer. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh is one. Yahweh is our father. You know, we are to serve him. We are, we, we're supposed to talk to him, talk about the commandments day and night, teach this to our children so that they know. You know what the saddest part is? My son and I are open in the church. We're working on the, my son, my son, Atar. He, he's ordained as a, a minister now, as a pastor. And we're doing it the way Yahava wants to do it. And the place is, we're, we're called, is called Yahava's house. That's how we're going to call it, Yahava's house. Hey, let's go to Yahava's house today. You know, that kind of, <laughs> it's going to be ours within the next month or so one of the things that you highlighted to me and it just kind of came to me as you were talking anybody that is going through something like this or they they feel like they're just they're in a fire right now with all the things that you know have affected them whatever is going on in their lives 
there's a difference. If you read through the word, there's a difference between a refining fire and a consuming fire. And we know we will not be consumed. So if you are in that place where you just feel like you got everything hitting the fan, there is such a thing that comes out of a refining fire that is beyond what you can imagine. And we know everything is seasons. And every time we come through one season, it's kind of like as you was talking about the whole like butterfly thing. I'm telling you, he refines us and these things happen because he loves us. And there's one day I just had an epiphany in my kitchen about suffering. And it's literally, if you think about it, if we did not know suffering, would we even begin to understand in the slightest what was done on the cross for us? Because you know what? All the suffering that we may have endured in our life don't actually compare to what he knew in what he was going through and how much he loved us because he knew every single ounce of suffering that would be going on in the world because of sin. And he was the final answer on that. So if you have not really sat there to think about what was done on that cross for you, I want you to really think about that. It was done for you. And that's just how important each and every person is to the Lord. And, uh, you know, thinking about the stories like, you know, these people suffered this and this and this. There is something to knowing suffering in this life. But again, I really feel like it ties into that refining process that we, we may not understand in this life. But and the other thing is when it comes to reading the word, a lot of people read it just for the sake of saying they read it. But the truth is you can read a book without understanding. I went through math, you guys. I can't tell you how many books I threw across the room when I was a kid because I didn't understand what they were trying to teach at the time. Now I've taught four children math and I'm way better at it than I ever was back when I was going through this time. But the point is you can read things. There, there is knowledge out there. You can read it without understanding. So if you just read it for the sake of reading it, go back. And if you've read it and you think that's good enough, it's something that I promise you it's meant to be continually read. I had an elder at a church I was going to once that he picked his Bible up and he said, you know, every time I pick this thing up, I can hardly believe it's the same book I've read before because it is living and active. So... After that, I know we've gone a little long today, and uh, it's just one of those things I want everybody to know. We're going to be praying for you. We we love praying over the people that watch and listen to our shows. And if you need prayer, please feel free to reach out to us, crazyblessedworship.com, the contact us. We're going to make sure you have all the links to know where to find and follow along with Azrael in the Crazy Blessed Worship Facebook group. And then there's a Crazy Blessed Worship public page. And uh, again, our website, crazyblessedworship.com. And if you check out his stuff, you know, and just like we appreciate when you do for Crazy Blessed Worship, like, love, follow, especially share. This helps more than you know. And if you're interested in private coaching, you know, Rick and I do that as well. Again, that's at that crazyblessedworship.com. Asriel, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. And uh, if you guys didn't figure it out, his sister is our awesome, the Deborah Scott from our admin team. And uh, Deborah, thank you for referring your brother to us. Guys, thank you so much for listening in. And we wish you a crazy, blessed day.